Welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be working on controlling your 3D printer via Octoprint and a 5 volt relay. As you can see here on the relay we have normally open, normally closed, and closed. We also have a 3D printed case that I made that can bolt to the frame of your printer, some cable clips, and a few T-nuts. The case itself can be found on Thingiverse. There'll be a link in the description below. Here's a closer look at the relay. You can see the normally opened, closed, and normally closed terminals, as well as the negative, the five volt, and the signal line coming from the Raspberry Pi. A quick look at how the relay will mount into the case. And again, we'll use some M3 nuts and screws to bolt the relay to the frame of our printer once everything is wired up. The T-nuts and cable clips can be found on Thingiverse as well. Links will be in the description. And as you can see here, I have an assortment of M3 nuts and bolts. The M3 nuts will fit into the T-nuts and then secure the case to our printer's frame. Now at the back of the printer, I wanna go ahead and disconnect the power connection coming from the power supply going into the printer itself. I'm going to cut the hot line coming from this connection and that is what's going to go into our relay. I'm going to line up the power connection to get an idea of where I want to cut the wire so I have enough slack to run it through the relay and then strip the ends of the wires. We don't want to add any solder or anything to the wires here. Just twist them together as the relay itself has screw down terminals. Once we have our wires stripped and ready to go, let's grab our relay. And as you can see in the diagram, we'll be using our normally open and closed. In essence, this means that the Raspberry Pi has to send a signal to the relay to power on the printer. By default, the relay will not be powering the printer on. We'll connect one end of the power connection going into the closed terminal, the center terminal of our relay, and the other to the normally open terminal. Once everything's in place, we'll put the relay down near the frame and get it mounted in the case. I also used some DuPont style connections for the three wires coming from our Raspberry Pi, five volt positive, five volt negative, and the signal line. And then pre-screwed in the T-nuts and M3 screws so we can mount the case to the frame. Once I had the screws in place, I bolted it down to the frame of my Ender 3 printer. and then mounted the relay inside the case itself. As you can see, there are notches cut out for the wires to go through, as well as a hole cut out for the relay's pins 
to plug in from the Raspberry Pi. Once everything's mounted, we can go ahead and plug our power back into the power supply, as well as hook up the connections going from the Raspberry Pi into the relay. Lastly, make sure you have enough clearance, no wire snag, the case doesn't get hit, and your bed can move freely. Once the DuPont connectors are plugged into the pins on the relay, we can route the wires to where we have our Raspberry Pi mounted. This is where I ended up using my cable clips just to kind of clean everything up and make sure no wires hang or snag or get caught up. I run the wires to the front of my printer where I have my Raspberry Pi mounted and trim away the excess. What I'm using here is actually a four conductor alarm cable and since I only need three of the actual wires I can cut the fourth away. The three wire connections are 5 volt positive, ground, and our signal wire coming from the GPIO pins on our Raspberry Pi. I'll use red for 5 volt, black for ground, and yellow for the signal wire coming from the Pi's GPIO pins. Unmounting my case, I can get access to the back of my Raspberry Pi. This is where I'm going to solder my connections just to make everything a little bit easier to route the wires. First I'll hook up 5 volt positive and then our ground wire. And lastly we'll connect in our GPIO pin for the data signal. If you wish to run the wires on the top of the case I went ahead and loaded up a diagram here showing you where to connect the same wire. Let's go ahead and get everything mounted back together and secured to the frame of our printer. Again, the wire coming from the back of my printer to the Raspberry Pi is ground, 5 volt positive, and the signal wire. Now that my Raspberry Pi is secured back to my frame, I can connect power back into it and get ready to boot everything up and start configuring the plugins. We'll do a quick once over just to make sure we don't have anything getting snagged. First thing we want to do is go into our OctoPrint interface, go to the plugin manager, add a new plugin, and you want to search for PSU Control. Once you locate it, go ahead and click install, let the plugin run through its installation process. Once done, click close and restart OctoPrint. Now we can go into the plugin settings. I chose to show the warning dialog when powering off the printer and also set the GPIO mode to BCM. Next we can configure the GPIO pin for switching. In our case we used pin 21. The remaining settings are optional and you may configure them for what best suits your setup. Save our changes and we should now have a new icon in the top right corner. This will allow us now to control that relay via the GPIO pin and control the power to our printer. As you can see here, my printer's booting up, loading OctoPrint. And once connected to the web UI, I can boot up and power off the printer itself from OctoPrint.
Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and this helped you out. If it did, please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe.